Welcome to session three of carving a drape king eider's head and today we'll do uh, details on the bill take you step by step through that if you haven't hit the subscribe button please do that if you value the content that I'm putting together that helps me out and that way you'll get notification of new content as I continue to add so let's get busy on detailing the bill all right, we've got the head kind of shaped up and sanded, and uh, now we want to start detailing the bill. And I've got this line drawn in, the separation between the upper and lower mandible. And I'm going to carefully take my knife, and I want to make a cut here. And then flip it upside down. Hope hope you can see this and make a cut right along here again being very careful and I like to just go multiple times and score it and gradually get deeper to keep the knife under control And got a pretty good separation there, casting a nice shadow between the upper and lower mandible. And I'll clean that up a little bit, but I'll do that on the other side as well. Just a quick shot of the other side. So we got that done. Now I want to begin to define the nail. So go back to the study bill. The nail on a Drake King Eider is pretty large, so we want to, you know, it's uh, five-eighths of an inch back from the tip. So we'll sketch that on and then carve in the nail. So I'm going to use a ruby bit here and uh, speeding up the video, but using this kind of pyramid-shaped ruby bit to go along the edge of the nail in both directions and begin to define the nail and separate it from the rest of the bill. It's kind of a back and forth process. And then rounding the nail as I begin to define its position on the bill. Then use a little light sandpaper to uh, take out any tool marks and smooth things up. Just penciling in the line uh, so you can see it. Now we're going to want to define these edges of the bill and it's fairly thick on a Drake King Eider. Where they come off the bill, I'm going to use the same bit. This bit has a little bit of a rounded tip and that uh, makes for a nice soft line as opposed to a, a real hard gouge or groove. So I'm just going back and forth to define that structure at the end of the bill and then blend that into the surrounding area. That goes back maybe a half an inch from the tip of the bill on both sides. Now I'm just using a little uh, ruby bit holder with a little ball ruby bit in it and using that as a sanding stick of sorts. And then the opposite end, I've, I've got a little flame shape. Now I want to define the uh, nostril. And uh, they're about a half inch distance between them. So I want to mark that from my center line on both sides. And there's a little bit of a ridge there 
defined by those nostrils, so I'm going to want to carve down from that position and begin to form some concaved areas, leaving that half-inch ridge in the center untouched, and then blending that out to the lower section of the bill. This is that triangular shaped or pyramid shaped ruby bit again. Once that's developed, then we can locate the nostrils and get those positioned and carved in. Now I'm just using a little sanding bit. It's a wrapped sandpaper and it's just in a kind of a bullet shape and it's really good for this type of uh, sanding in difficult to reach places. So I want to smooth that up and get rid of the tool marks and the any scratches um, before we begin to develop the nostrils. Just working in that transition area between the the hard bill below and the, the lobes above. Make sure that's all smooth and, and ready for detail. Now we can work on positioning the nostrils. Now I've done a little rough shaping of the bill and some of the features. I want to locate the nostril openings. So I'm going from the tip of the bill to the back and uh, find that location on my carving. Make myself a little mark on both sides there. And then the length about like that. So I'm going from that mark to the front. So I know the rough location of the nostrils. And then looking at the shape, they tuck up under this little bit of overhang of the lobe. And they're kind of on either side of this little ridge that we carved in across the top. And pay attention to the shape of the nostril, the, the angle. Try to lay that out. And then I'll use some detailed carving tools to shape that nostril and then we'll put the actual nostril hole in after that. Now I'm going to use a small cylindrical ruby bit and begin to outline the nostril it's actually the structure around the nostrils themselves but beginning to carve that in so it's following that shape from the uh, study bill and going back and forth and slowly defining those positions Now I'm going to change bits to this flame shape and that allows me to, to dig in a little bit and further define that nostril enclosure and get rid of any uh, tool marks or grinding marks in preparation for putting the nostrils in place. You're really looking for symmetry at this time. It's easy to get nostrils in different locations. Uh, so just going back and forth and making sure, and that's why I'm using a pencil here, it's a little easier to see 
than from the front that way. Now I'm just using the dividers to measure the opening of the nostril and then position that on the carving, both sides. And I do like to pencil in the nostrils uh, and then take a look at them from the front and make sure things are symmetrical and they're level the way they should be before I carve them in there. Now I've got a little ruby bit that's in a very small ball shape and using that to carefully go in and cut in the nostrils. You really have to maintain good control here. It's easy to slip out and uh, buzz through the nostril enclosure. So just take your time. And I like to gradually deepen these. Knock down any burrs with a little sandpaper. And then I, I like to pencil in the nostril. And that gives me a good look at what it's going to look like when we're done. You can see that is too thin and the pencil helped me identify that. So I'm going back to open that nostril up a little bit more. And I'm happier with that look. Now I'm going to work to put a little bit of detail on the underside of the, the bill. And I'm just following the study bill. I've got a little cylindrical ruby bit here and I don't go overboard on uh, detail under here but I like to put a little structure under there the characteristic shapes that you see under a bill so I'm just going to spend a little bit of time working that back and forth and looking at the study bill and duplicating what I see there Back to the knife, carefully scoring this line for a structure on the edge of the bill. Just take your time. Now we'll grind that. A little bit to put some definition around it. I'm going to use that little cylindrical ruby bit that I use to define the nostril enclosures and just follow that score line. The knife mark gives your grinding tool a little bit of a guide. Um, so just follow that knife line and further define that and open it up a little bit so that uh, when you finish the bill, that line, that ridge along the edge of the bill is, is visible. You don't want to go too deep. It's pretty subtle, but that looks pretty good. I'll just go back and forth to make sure they're even and not any waviness. And then I fold up a little piece of 320 grit sandpaper and just go up and down that groove and just round the uh, edges of the groove so it's not a real sharp line there. Just soften it. Now I'm just using some 320 grit sandpaper and going over the bill to smooth everything out. And we're gonna do some embossing of the lobes to put some structure in there. But in order to do that, we need to have everything sanded well and smooth. So I'll just take some time to do that and then we'll come back. Okay, this may be hard to see in the video, but I'll give it a shot. I'm gonna do some embossing of this structure on the lobes and coming up from the bill we're going to put a few wrinkles um, these basically go in this direction and then in the middle there's a lot of crisscrossing kind of patchwork of structure 
and it kind of fades out as you get closer to the bill down here. So I'm going to use this ball embossing tool and begin at the back of the nostril and just put a few marks coming up and then start on the edge. I'm going to do a little and then I'll try to get a, a shot with shadows so you can see what kind of what things are looking like. But as you go towards the middle, you know, these kind of follow radially and then they interlock a bit. So you can see that and that's first first pass and we want that deep enough that the paint is going to translate through it and when i emboss you know you, there's a tendency to use leave a hard line you want to go back and burnish the hard lines off a bit and round things out to soften the look and then as you get to the edge of the bill here you can press pretty hard and deepen those marks as they wrap around the the end of the lobe and there's a couple of these down here so i'll do some work and then come back and show you the results i hope you can see that it's a quick shot of that embossing so I'll keep working on that. Again, most of the heavy stuff is up here, fades out towards the bill, a few wrinkles down here, a few wrinkles wrapping around the front. Just continuing that on the opposite side. There's no real pattern other than maybe along the edge, some trends, but in the middle, a lot of crisscross and again, doing some rounding uh, to soften things so they're not real hard trenches. A few around the front. Now I want to install the eyes, so you've seen this before. I'll do it again on this bird. Measurement from the tip of the bill to the front of the eye. Transfer that onto the carving, both sides. the circle template out then I'll mark the location of these eyes and then we'll uh, use a gouge to open those up and do the eye installation if you're going to use this method make sure you keep a firm grip on the head. You don't want that tool slipping into your hand. A lot of people use an eye drill just to drill this diameter. I just got used to using a gouge and it's what I have so it's what I use and it works. I'll do that on both sides. All right, I've got my epoxy sculpt mixed, kneaded and ready to do the eye installation. Got some water, I'm just gonna 
cover the area to promote bonding of the material in there. Push a plug of epoxy sculpt in there. Focus on the front dimension. That is the mark that I put in place for the proper eye position. Press that in. These are Michael Braun eyes, by the way, and I really like what Mike is doing uh, to provide eyes to the carving community. And I'm gonna want a little bit of a brow to come over the top. To continue this uh, crest feather line. So I'm going to push some epoxy in place there and now start using the water to blend it in. Blend it back into this feather group that goes down and back. It's using quite a bit of pressure to push with that water and blend into the surrounding area so that I don't have to sand very much. Now I'll just use a good stiff brush to open the eye back up a bit. I've got water on this brush, by the way, and that helps the shaping. Make sure there's a good eye channel there so that there's the bird can see. And then I'm going to pull this back into this cape or crest area. So I'll work this, but you've seen me do this before. So I'm going to install both eyes. And then we'll come back and we'll be finished with the details on the head. Be back in a minute. All right, that completes the carving. Got the eyes inserted. I've got a little sanding to do. Let's give you a front on view there. So in the next session, we'll finish sanding that head and then we'll insert these horn feathers with the hardwood holly. All right, that completes today's session. Uh, you may not be carving a king eider drake, but you may want to do it down the road sometime. And that, that's the goal for this YouTube channel is to create a repository of how to carving and painting videos that people can go to at any time and they'll be there for as long as YouTube is there. So until next time, Tom Christie signing off. Good carving to you.